Good afternoon, good evening. Yes, uh, my name is uh, Tequero Buom, and I'm from the University of Nairobi, Department of Clinical Studies, Faculty of Vet Medicine. So my talk is from theory to practice, developing shared competencies amongst One Health practitioners at multiple levels. Um, part of what I'm going to talk about has been uh, described by, I think, the first two or three presenters. So my work is very easy, and I believe I'm going to take the prize because I'll take uh, the least amount of time. So that's the outline of my presentation. So competency is the ability to do something successfully or efficiently. And some of the important attributes uh, is the person has to demonstrate sufficient expertise. Uh, it also enables the organization to recruit and select staff more effectively. It also helps in evaluation of performance, uh, identifying of skills and competency gaps. It also provides for customized training and the professional development, helps for planning, and especially for succession. And it also makes change management processes to work more efficiently. So we talk about the competencies and One Health. We need to think about uh, One Health professional education courses. And it's important to note that the world over, uh, they often have similar course content as well as similar expectations for learners, but they often employ multidisciplinary approaches especially during curriculum development, as has been mentioned by Professor Nangami. Uh, this often will involve the inclusion of stakeholders, such as professional and regulatory bodies, industry, alumni, and many others. If you look about at this uh, uh, from Amoguni et al. in 2018, we can see that we have the technical One Health competencies that tend to be similar across various curricula the world over. But what do we do or what do we, what is the thought of uh, various bodies or various professionals on the non-technical competencies? I know Edna had mentioned something about uh, in the previous presentation about the social sciences, the gender issues such as project management and communication. This is where we tend to have a lot of differences in the curricula and uh, this is where we sometimes do not lay enough emphasis, but it's very important that we do so when we're developing curricula for training different cadres. If we talk about pre-service training, uh, what we have undertaken at the university over the past few years, we've had a joint development of curricula, especially for didactic uh, courses. And I know certain uh, undergraduate programs already have one Health as a standalone course that is examinable and is also in their transcripts. We also have views of community-based education approaches to multidisciplinary groups of students. As you can see there, I don't want to talk about what Carol will come with next, but this is basically some of the things that we do. Use of simulations, and there's also joint response to One Health events, especially disease outbreaks. If we talk about in-service training, we have short courses, seminars, workshops, and conferences. And uh, this is just an example of a series of trainings we've been carrying out in collaboration with, uh, with One Health Echo and uh, various other partners. And of course, these help in creation of communities of practice, as well as in development of partnerships, as well as continuous professional development. We also have uh, postgraduates and diploma stroke degree programs. This is the degree program Professor Nangami was talking about, and it was a joint development between the University of Nairobi, uh, School of Public Health, Faculty of Vet Medicine, as well as the Moy University School of Public Health and our various partners. And uh, it's part of what we envision to have for uh, in-service training, so people can end up with postgraduate degrees 
in One Health and related courses. So some of the challenges we've seen over the years is uh, in scheduling of joint events. For instance, when you have multiple institutions uh, working together, multiple faculties working together, we all have our timetables and schedules. So bringing multidisciplinary students to work together sometimes can be a challenge because one group is doing exams, another group has done exams and are free for training. So that has always been a challenge. There have also been challenges in funding. Uh, this of course is an ongoing concern for when it comes to most aspects of training, not just in Kenya, but the world over. The silo mentality and team building is something that is uh, not very easy to to surmount, it's a very serious problem, but I think it's something that needs to be done. Uh, we probably during the discussion have to look at how would we, do we break the silos or do we link the silos, okay? Because this is a very serious problem when it comes to development of uh, One Health and training of One Health in this country and the region. We also have issues of changing government and institutional policies and priorities. Uh, you find that, for instance, with the diminishing funding, some institutions might want to reduce the number of courses that they offer, especially if the student numbers are low. And this definitely affects the training of students and the offering of uh, different courses. And the other problem is sometimes there's expertise that isn't locally available. Uh, luckily, as we'll see later on, uh, this issue has been uh, solved for the most part by the use of digital technologies because we're now able to communicate. Unlike the pre-COVID days where we had to ship people from all over the world, these days we can have trainings online. So some of the recommendations or lessons learned is that we need to have a way of affecting culture change because this is what will help different professions to work together and in the formation of One Health teams. We also need to inbuild sustainability in our training programs at all levels, whether it's at uh, primary school, secondary school, tertiary uh, education, we need to inbuild sustainability because if any program or any activity is not sustainable, then of course it will die off once the donor leaves. We also need to work as multiple institutions so that we take advantage of the expertise. So if the expertise is not available at the University of Nairobi, but we have it at Moy University, who have been our partners for many years, then it is very easy for us to get this expertise and share it and uh, use it to enhance One Health training in the country and the region. There's also South to South collaboration. And this is also something that is very possible. We need to, as much as possible, try to also use the expertise available in the region. And uh, this also makes it more affordable when you want to have face-to-face uh, -face training, but of course, online training now also helps to enhance this. We also need to have ways of influencing policy on training. And this can only be done by having high quality research, sorry for the spelling error. So high quality research would help to enhance this and also the dissemination of findings to all relevant stakeholders. So this would help us to influence policy and uh, talk to government, talk to the people who hold the money and ask them to assist us in training some of these. So one health competency development at all levels is key for workforce growth in this dynamic world with emerging threats, as had been mentioned by Professor Jenga Munene. And uh, my last slide is just references, and I say thank you.